Hi, this is Madi Mahoval, the Manos Berlakis, and this is case 142 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of uh, three bifurcations performed in one patient during a single procedure. The patient was an elderly gentleman who presented with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction and ongoing chest discomfort. Diagnostic angiography was done using right radial axis and was actually fairly challenging, requiring use of a long, 85 centimeter long, six friends R2P sheath, and that demonstrated significant coronary disease with a significant distal left main, a bifurcation of the circumflex, and also there is disease in the left arterial descending artery with an LAD diagonal bifurcation. It was unclear which was the culprit lesion, as all three of the lesions appeared to be significant and potentially ulcerated. This is the right coronary artery that did not have any significant stenosis. So in summary, we have an 81-year-old gentleman, three major bifurcations, left main, there is a circumflex obtuse marginal, as well as an LAD diagonal bifurcation. What to do next? And of course, the key question is to determine whether we should do PCI or whether we should send the patient to coronary artery bypass graft surgery. The patient has advanced age, which is 81 years old, and he was actually seen emergently by the surgeons who did not want to proceed with emergent coronary bypass graft surgery. So PCI is uh, indicated, and the question is how to perform it optimally given the urgency of the procedure with the patient having ongoing chest discomfort. And the other questions are how extensive should the revascularization be? Should it be just for the left main or should we try to do everything? And is there a need for hemodynamic support? So what was done to further understand the patient hemodynamics is a right heart catheterization that showed an array of 13 millimeters mercury and a wedge of 24. So the patient does have increased wedge pressure. And we also did an echocardiogram on the cath lab table that showed an injection fraction low normal at 50%. So based on this, we decided to switch to femoral axis, giving the difficulties we had with radial axis, and to use uh, Impella CP for supporting the, uh, the patient during the procedure. We then engaged the left main with an EBU 375, and then used workhorse wires. And the question is which technique to use for approaching those bifurcations, and it depends on the anatomy. So for example, for the left main bifurcation, the side branch is important and needs to be preserved, and there was significant likelihood of occlusion because both the left main, the LAD, and the circumflex had lesions. So this requires a plan to stand strategy, and DK Cross is the most commonly one performed at our laboratory and was chosen for this particular case. In con the same for the diagonal LAD bifurcation. Whereas for the circumflex lesion, we decided to use provisional standing. There is the femoral axis, the impella sheath was placed. We typically do an injection of contrast after placing the impella sheath to ensure that there is undergrade flow into the lower extremity. If there is not, we still most of the time proceed with the procedure, but then we know that within a few hours, the patient will likely develop limb ischemia, and that's another factor to know how to approach hemodynamic support. So in this patient, we first balloon the left main to ensure easy access to the vessels and then perform intravascular ultrasound that showed significant disease both in the LAD as well as the diagonal. So we predilated both lesions, and our plan was to perform double kissing crush technique. These are the 17 steps of DK crush, which are described in a separate video. And this were done here. After predilatation, we started by positioning a stand into the diagonal branch, protruding into the LAD. That was a 3.0 by 13 millimeter stand. And then that was deployed, we ensured that the result was good, and then we crushed it with the balloon we had placed into the LAD. We rewired and performed the first kissing balloon inflation, followed by placing a 3.0 by 40 millimeter stent into the LAD, covering the mid lesion as well as the more proximal lesion. We did have difficulty with rewiring the diagonal after the 
stand placement into the LED. And sometimes we may need to use a different guide wire, such as a polymer jacketed wire or a dual lumen microcatheter. But in this case, a workhorse xenon blue wire eventually successfully crossed into the diagonal branch, followed by balloon and uh, the second kissing balloon inflation and proximal optimization with a nice result into the LED. The patient was hemodynamically stable through all this, and we did not want to stand the left main first to avoid having issues with crossing and recrossing the stents. We decided to next approach the circumflex, and there there did not seem to be significant disease in the obtuse marginal ostium, and that is why we decided to use the provisional approach with a single stand placed into the circumflex after, of course, wiring the OM since that was a large and important branch. We did place uh, a 3O by 13 millimeter stand covering the ostium of the obtuse marginal. But then we did have difficulty advancing balloons. We ended up having to use a small 1.0 subfire balloon to get through, followed by increasingly larger balloons up to 2.75. And that uh, provided a nice result without causing any compromise in the ostium of the obtuse marginal. At this point, the patient was um, agitated and was moving a lot, which was making it very hard to perform the procedures. And actually, uh, paradoxically, he was actually hypertensive with the blood pressure exceeding 200. And at this point, the patient was intubated, followed by a relaxation and a significant decrease in the systemic pressures without significant increase in the PA pressures. Once again, how to approach the left bifurcation. This was a Medina 111, and our plan was to do the DK crash using the circumflex as the side branch and the LED as the main vessel. We first stand in the circumflex. We had a balloon in the left main. We did uh, crush it and rewire and perform the first kissing balloon inflation. And then we did place the stand all the way from the left main into the LED, essentially overlapping the previously placed LED stand. That was a 3.5 by 30 millimeter stand. We did proximal optimization with a 4.0 millimeter balloon before rewiring the circumflex. The patient also had a Ramos branch in which we inserted a guide wire for protection. But having uh, the uh, proximal optimization prevented wiring under the struts when going back into the circumflex. We then did the... Um, second kissing balloon inflation and final proximal optimization with a 4.0 millimeter NC balloon and that provided a nice result so we did have excellent outcome in both the lady diagonal circumflex obtuse marginal as well as left main bifurcation uh, it did take uh, some time 77 minutes of fluoroscopy uh, 2.3 gray and uh, 170 ml of contrast so in summary uh, this is a patient with multivessel disease and multiple bifurcations. The first question in patients like this is, of course, coronary bypass versus percutaneous coronary intervention. In this particular case, due to the patient's age, ongoing chest discomfort, it was decided to not do bypass, and PCI was done instead. Trying to determine the culprit lesion can be challenging in those patients as it can be to determine the extent of revascularization. In this case, all three lesions, LED diagonal, circumflex, and left main, appear to be important. And that is why we decided to do multivessel PCI treating all three bifurcations. We did use two stent techniques, specifically DK crash for the LED diagonal and the left main, and provisional for the circumflex obtuse marginal with a nice result. And we did use echo and right heart cath to determine the need of hemodynamic support. The patient actually did well, and um, he had uh, uh, the impeller device removed at the end of the procedure. Thank you very much.